Hi everyone, this is Noelle from Petite Garden Centers and we are gonna show you what's in store for July. I can't believe the summer's already gotten to this point. Um, beautiful color in the greenhouses, especially outside in the perennial department and nursery. So we'll, we'll take you all the way through, but you can see right behind me, I have what these are, our repeat blooming sunflowers. Kind of new on the market, if you will. We've had them for a couple of years now. Maybe this is our third season, but I've got Suncredible over this shoulder and I have Sunfinity over this shoulder. And really the difference between the two, because they're, they're both phenomenal bloomers. They're a great cut flower. You can put them in a vase for about seven to 10 days. They'll hold their flowers for you. But what's great is they're just repeat bloomers. But this one, this is Suncredible. Suncredible's a little bit more compact, if you will. Um, probably around that 24 to 36 inch mark tall. Um, as wide, but uh, foliage is a little bit more, um, if you will, kind of wavy on the margins, a little bit more, um, uh, maybe just a little bit smaller, and maybe that's more indicative of its size. And then Sun um, Sunfinity over here, over this shoulder, this one's actually a little bit taller, that three foot to four foot size, um, about three foot wide. Again, great repeat blooms, a little bit larger foliage on these plants. So look for these. Like I said, they are coming out now and they just will bloom throughout the season for you. Hundreds of blooms on these plants, which is so unique because sunflowers are usually one stem, you know, a big flower at the top. And then when they're done blooming, they're basically done. So um, good improvement here. Okay, we're gonna move down to some of the other summer crops because some of these things, and I've kind of told you all before, but like flowering vinca, you don't see it until the heat of the summer comes on just because it, it doesn't like to grow in cool weather. Um, so some of these crops are, come on like, I mean, they're just so beautiful at this time of year because of the heat that we have in Northeast Ohio. So we're gonna walk this way and I've shown you these before and I absolutely love them. This is Angelonia and we call this summer snapdragon sometimes. This is a great flowering plant for the, the thrillers in the garden where you need some upright flowering accent, beautiful colors, purples, uh, pinks, whites, and so forth. But I'll tell you with these guys, they really do enjoy the heat. So again, coming on, doing a great job. They're pretty good as far as your deer resistance is concerned. They do attract pollinators, so great, great plant. And then you'll see over here, look at all the sun patients are really filling out nicely. Um, again, when that heat comes on, they really start to kind of branch and really start to fill. So awesome. This plant right through here, and we probably talked about it before, but these are all pentas. Pentas are a cluster of a five pointed star flower. So every one of these flowers is an awesome hummingbird magnet, really good for the pollinators, really any pollinator. Um, but there are so many in one cluster that it's just a fantastic summer annual to plant. They do love the sun. I should have mentioned that with Angelonia, you know, sun lovers, pentas are sun lovers, sunflowers, obviously sun lovers. So again, lots of different colors with the pentas, reds, pinks, whites, lavenders, really, really great. But again, awesome sun lovers. Just they, they do so well in the sun and heat. So you can't beat them as far as annuals are concerned. So we're here, um, I, I wanted to show you this kind of new petunia family. And we're doing a little bit more experimenting with this. And I think we talked about it last fall, but the petunias that you see here are what they call super cal petunias. They're kind of a cross between a regular petunia, large size petunia, and then a calabrocoa. So the mini petunias, they cross them and they've come, um, they have bred some really unique colors, some beautiful colors. Um, but these petunias tend to last a very, very long time into the season. And so we're just kind of experimenting with them right now, but I wanted to point them out because they really 
they're self-cleaning like most of your supers or your waves they are attracted to your your hummingbirds especially um you know pollinators so they're they're good in all of those ways but they are very very heat tolerant very um sun tolerant again and also when we get later in the season very cool tolerant as well so um beautiful beautiful colors here beautiful you know cherry purples this one is cinnamon i just think Look at that, the change in color there. Beautiful kind of reddish, and then it turns to kind of a bronze, coppery bronze, beautiful. Um, this one is caramel, has a really pretty sort of golden yellow, but then has a little bit of that bronze in the center. We've got sunny yellows, light yellows as well. And then this one, let me see if I can pull one out that has that beautiful that sunset. So beautiful coloration on these petunias, kind of um, changeable, if you will, but good trailer. So you can use them as fillers, you can use them as spillers and containers. And again, you know, taking you through the summer season. So really cool. One of my favorite vines is black eyed Susan vines um, or Thumbergia. And so, boy, these guys are so great. They are a fairly fast growing vine and Taylor will probably give you a close up. Some of these are starting to grow up some of the irrigation drippers that we have, spinner heads that we have, but beautiful flowers again. Um, these are an annual vine, so they, they really will only uh, grow through the, the annual season, but they just fill, you can put them in hanging baskets and pots and containers of trellises, and they'll, they'll grow, grow, grow. You can grow them up a mailbox. They will grow very, very quickly for you. But again, bring on all of that vigorous growth in the heat of summer. So they kind of get a slow start. And then again, when everything starts to heat up, they start to get going. So um, really beautiful plants, lots of different colors. There used to be only just like a yellow and an orange. And now there's rose colors and um, kind of uh, like a, a blend of colors now in the flowers. So um, really great family. And if you drive through Twinsburg, they have these growing through their uh, hanging baskets out on the, in the community. Um, so do take a look um, at them. You'll love them. They're awesome growers. We are by the zinnias and man, have they exploded. We have Magellan, which is a, a double flowering, um, kind of compact, if you will, right around that 12 to maybe 16 inch mark. Um, but beautiful cut flowers. And boy, I'm gonna tell you the zinnias, um, you know, keep good air circulation up around them, keep on cutting them. They will continue to produce more and more. And I know that I've mentioned this before, but they are an awesome plant for all pollinators, birds, hummingbirds, butterflies, and bees. So really having them in the garden, being able to see that central eye and the pollen is really, really good. And uh, you know, a multitude of colors. So you can really get just about any color with zinnias, not blue yet, but you can get close um, with the purples. So, and then of course I wanted to point out the flowering vinca again, awesome plant. Um, for our area, especially with the heat and humidity that comes on in the summer, all different colors, reds, pinks, cranberry colors, peaches, whites, um, great plant, especially if you are planting for Independence Day and, and planning time, some of those, you know, great midsummer parties outside, um, beautiful reds and whites here, throw in a splash of blue with blue salvia, what have you, and it will, it'll turn out awesome. Perennials in July, these two are my favorite, especially for your shady spots. You have a stilby and you have ferns. And they, again, a lot of this has to do with the moisture that we've been having, experiencing. The stilby love that. Whatever you do, remember, a stilby love moisture in the soil do not let them dry out. They can grow in full sun. You just have to keep the soil continually moist. The ferns, eh, they don't care as much. They can go a little bit drier. They can go a little bit wetter, but a still be, that's always gonna be the key. And you see so many different colors here. We have Rise and Shine, which is this beautiful kind of medium pink. We have got 
Maggie Daly, which is more of like a violet, um, violet pink purple has those nice dark stems. Um, I have some whites here that are just getting started, snowdrift. And then also you see visions in white back there that's fluffy and fully open. And this is actually purple visions here. This is the true vision. I shouldn't say purple, it's just called visions, but it was kind of that first, um, if you will, chinensis uh, of the vision series. So again, a still be chinensis, beautiful. Again, very, very rough, hairy foliage, hairy stems, you know, pretty rough flowers. That's always gonna be really great as far as deer resistance is concerned. And then when you couple them with something like Autumn Brilliance Fern, I mean, you can't beat that coppery color. Um, and you'll get these coppery fronds kind of all season long. It's not always green. It's not always a bronze color. It's, it, it mixes throughout the season. So I love the Autumn Brilliance Fern. It's one of our favorites. And then ostrich, you can't beat. Just the, the size of ostrich is really outstanding in the garden. You know, they can get that three foot, four foot tall in the garden. Beautiful, kind of light green color. So really pretty um, in the shade. And I'm gonna tell you the fronds are awesome as cut flowers, um, you know, fillers for cut flowers and vases and things. They last forever. So do look for your ferns and your still be combo in the shade. I promised you that there would be a ton of color out in perennials. And I hope I'm holding to my word here. It is the time for delphinium to really come out and be showy. Um, I wanted to show you this combination. So this is Delphix Blue Delphinium. Um, it's kind of a cross between a delphinium and a larkspur. And um, the reason being is look at that kind of fine ferny foliage on this one. Delphix Blue is a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact in the garden. So that's nice too. You don't have to spend as much time staking. Um, but of course the tall delphinium like the Aurora series are always awesome in the garden, but they do need a little bit of support. So um, Delphix Blue is that beautiful electric blue. And then Stella, of course, has coupled it with a beautiful coneflower. This is um, Artisan Red Ombre. Um, so these coneflowers, the, the petal color changes, sort of kind of fades from a, a, a peachy, orangey, to a, a red and a burnt red. So really cool uh, plant. And I love this combo. And then of course, midsummer brings on the daylilies. So um, if you look across this table, you've got, you know, all the classics. Happy Returns is that beautiful lemon yellow, tetraploid, repeat blooming, compact, just awesome. Um, again, with daylilies, of course, they, they don't have a lot of protection with the critters out there, but man, can they really repeat bloom throughout the growing season once they get started. They really go for, golly, probably 10 weeks, 12 weeks. They just kind of keep on going. And if you can get out there and deadhead every once in a while and remove the um, seed head that starts to produce after they're done blooming, that always helps continue the bloom cycle. So keep that in mind with your uh, repeat blooming daylilies. But you've got Stella Dioro right behind it, um, which is that deeper golden color. You have Ruby Stella in the back, which is um, more of that red burgundy color. So there's lots of great repeat bloom and daylilies. Um, if you enjoy them, they are a really, really easy plant to grow for us in the perennial garden. And then we're gonna turn this way and, um, oh, I forgot, coneflowers are coming on, folks. So check out if Taylor pans across this table, there are so many beautiful varieties that are really just getting started out there um, in the landscape. And again, just remember the garden center in the pots, the pots will heat up a little bit faster. So they do go into bloom a little bit faster than what they do in the garden. But um, July is gonna be a great month for coneflowers carrying on into August and you know into um, September as well. So 
keep that in mind. So many different beautiful varieties with the cone flowers here. And then I did want to show you because of course, midsummer, um, we tend to see a lot of these beautiful upright summer flocks. Um, and, and again, all different colors. Um, some of them are very, very fragrant. They are great pollinator attractants. Of course, with summer flocks, they're notorious for having some powdery mildew issues, kind of um, bare knees, if you will, at the base. So I always want to remind you with the, the flocks, again, good air circulation, give them space to fill out. Don't plant anything else real close to them. And that's always gonna help reduce those um, diseases. When it's raining every other day, every night, like we've had, um, just make sure that you get your copper fungicide out spray it in the evening, go ahead and spray the lower leaves, especially because when the water splashes up on those lower leaves, that's where you see most of that disease. So do keep that in mind, but just look at the colors, absolutely gorgeous. Um, there are newer varieties out there, um, opening acts and, and different cover girl and, and so forth. The newer varieties of your upright garden flocks or summer flocks do have better disease resistance again, but when you have a wet, humid season, you sometimes will still get, um, you know, the powdery mildew issues and so forth. So just keep that in mind when you're growing these. But again, well-drained soil, um, keep the flowers deadheaded. They will produce lower um, branching continue to bloom for you. So um, beautiful, beautiful colors through here. And this is the flame family through this area here. And again, flame, upper leaves stay really, really clean. Very, very nice. Lower leaves can get a little spotty, uh, but again, beautiful coloration all through here. And Again, the hummingbirds will absolutely appreciate you planting these in the garden. July is a great time to attract pollinators in the garden um, as well. And, and Oakwood has set up a really beautiful display of pollinator attractants um, right behind me here. We have a double, uh, double play pink spirea down below. The spireas are, um, again, in the rose family, they do attract quite a few of your pollinators, especially bees. We've got the daisies. And if you look, Taylor might be able to catch, but we've got all different bees out here, not just honeybees, but there are some of the native bees. Um, I've seen some sweat bees out. I've also seen some of the bumbles around too. So um, just so you're aware, again, daisy family, always really, really good. Your Shasta daisies, um, real sunbeam is that beautiful double yellow there. I also have the yellow kudos um, Agastaki or false Aesop. And oh my gosh, every time you walk by, you just get a nice whiff of kind of clean, minty uh, fragrance. So those are always great for your pollinators. And again, the sweat bees are checking out the Agastaki really, really well. So that's wonderful. And then back behind me, and I see some honeybees back here, back behind me is cruising Broad Street Coreopsis, that coppery orange color sort of changes throughout the season, but there are plenty of bees all through here. And the one I forgot is the yarrow. So this yarrow, this beautiful color is pomegranate. Pomegranate I love because it kind of opens with that deep um, red color, and then it can fade a little bit and kind of be a softer sort of cherry red. So uh, beautiful in the garden, awesome. All these plants would love the full sun again, but they're really, really attractive to those pollinators. In the nursery, I feel like the hydrangeas again have exploded and we always kind of highlight hydrangeas in July, but check out these smooth hydrangeas. This is Limetta. This is part of the Invincible series. Um, again, your smooth hydrangeas are very, very easy care, very low maintenance, very hardy. Um, they are native to the United States. Um, and these guys, I mean, you can just see all the different blooms. They are blooming like gangbusters right now. The Limettas, the Mini Mauvettes, the Wee Whites, those are gonna be your shorter varieties. So right around, I'd say 30 inch mark, probably 30 inches tall, 30 inches wide, but beautiful flowers for the cut garden. Um, great in, you can put them in full sun, keep the soil moist, really do very, very nicely in part shade areas. But again, keep cutting them so they keep on blooming. 
And then I wanted to show you this pink behind uh, Limetta here. This is pink uh, beauty. I was gonna say pink diamond, that's not right. So pink beauty. Pink Beauty is a little bit unique in the respect that she is a macrophylla and a serrata hydrangea, so a, a mountain hydrangea, okay? Really, really good cold hardiness on her, beautiful big blooms, and what's really interesting is she has these bright red stems. When her blooms come out, they are pink in color, but they will change. Sometimes they start as kind of like a creamy, creamy pink, then they'll begin to mature and really get into a deeper pink color. So really unusual, but beautiful, beautiful hydrangea. Again, better in the part shade, well-drained yet moist soil. So think about that. And then butterfly bushes are really, really popping on. We've got Miss Ruby here, she's a little bit taller, a uh, butterfly bush that we've talked about before as far as Miss Ruby. And then down below, I have the smaller compact, lo and behold, lilac chip. Beautiful, very profuse blooming. I wanted to tell you that the Lo and Behold series is what they call a, a sterile uh, Budlia or butterfly bush. And so these guys um, are really, really nice as far as repeat bloomers. They're never gonna produce seed. They're never gonna be out of flower once they get going all the way until the fall frost because they're just constantly um, in bud and bloom cycle. So they're always a, a great addition, low addition. Um, to your pollinator garden and your in your midsummer garden as well. And then of course, look at the hydrangea trees are here. So they are really starting to fill out very nicely. This is pinky winky, really, really budded up. You know, not, I'd say probably another couple weeks before we really get some full flowering and color out of uh, pinky winky, depending on how warm it gets, but um, the hydrangea trees are ready to go. Lots of color in the barberry section. My gosh, these guys have really exploded as well. I keep on saying that, but um, beautiful, beautiful color is really coming out in their foliage right now when you hit that heat of the summer. Again, barberry are a, a great plant to grow in the garden. Uh, very, very deer resistant, of course, because they're thorny from base to tip, but very easy to grow if you need some foliage color. So I'm just gonna show you, you've got a couple of upright varieties here. Hellman Pillar is this dark burgundy purple. And then right here is Orange Rocket. And if you look close at Orange Rocket, it has like a little bit of a lime green margin on the leaf, which I think looks awesome in the landscape. And then these lower compact varieties here, I've got mini salsa. So you can kind of tell this is Sunjoy mini salsa, really, really lower uh, variety and sort of a, a weeping mounded uh, habit, if you will. So just depending on what type of barberry you're looking for and where you want to put it in the border should dictate the varieties that you really want to purchase. And if you're looking for fruit trees, you really can plant them all through the growing season. If they're grown in a pot, they'll transplant very, very well into the ground. Just remember, you want to keep up your maintenance, but there are peaches, there are apples available, there's cherries available. And um, again, summer plants no problem whatsoever. Just make sure that you really um, take care of your six steps for success, the planting depth, the twice the width of the hole, putting in and amending your soil and, um, you know, watering one inch a week and you'll be ready to grow. We are standing here by Annabelle hydrangea, which again is another one of the smooth hydrangeas, classic, big, beautiful white flower heads. Um, we have definitely trimmed her back quite a bit. Normally in the landscape, you get a nice four foot tall, four foot wide plant. And I'll always suggest planting multiples of these fairly close together so they sort of their stems support each other. Um, but again, beautiful white blooms. The pollinators again are all over them. So that always gets me really excited for midsummer. And there's tons of color still to be had out in the landscape as you can see behind us. Enjoy.